This video will describe how to use the Onset Kilowatt Hour Assistant software tool with the Hoboware Pro software. The Hoboware Pro Kilowatt Hour Assistant is used to convert pulses, or what Hoboware calls counts, from uh, pulse generating energy meters. Onset sells a couple of different types of these devices specifically the watt node device from Continental Controls, also the Varus kilowatt hour um, transducer that outputs pulses. So we give you the ability both um, at the time of launch and when you read out your data to scale those pulses or those counts into um, energy kilowatt hours and calculated power based on what your logging interval is. I have a UX90001 connected to my computer, and I have Hoboware Pro open on my desktop. We're going to get into the launch screen. As you know, or as you may know, the UX90001 can handle uh, several different types of uh, logging algorithms, state, event, runtime, but we're going to deal with pulses. So again, basically what we're doing when we select pulse is we are setting a logging interval and we're going to be accumulating pulses uh, between each logging interval and, and we're going to um, display that data as the amount of energy con consumed in KWH per logging interval. All of our pulse input devices, loggers and the pulse input adapters have uh, memory built into them that allow us to accumulate pulses in between uh, each logging interval. So you don't have to worry about logging very, very quickly or missing um, um, pulses in between intervals, uh, unless your device is, is, can generate more than 65,000 pulses in, a, in that very short period of time between logging intervals. So um, it's actually more advantageous to log a little bit slower when you're logging pulses that way you're accumulating more pulses uh, in between intervals keep in mind that you're you're logging kilowatt hours which are you know thousands of watts per hour so um, if you start logging at a very very fast logging rate and you have a device or a circuit that it doesn't use a lot of power the amount of pulses per interval could be extremely small and because we're creating an association or a, we're, we're doing some math to say so many pulses equals so many kilowatt hours. If you're only getting one or zero pulses every interval, your data is not going to be very interesting or um, uh, it's going to be, it's going to seem nonsensical. It may seem nonsensical to you. So that's why it's important to try to use a little bit of a slower logging interval. When we're when we have customers who are uh, logging data from a watt node or a Varus device, we usually suggest logging once a minute or slower. Uh, obviously, if you have a circuit that has a or a or a device that you want to log and has a very fast duty cycle, um, less than a minute, then we need to throttle that back so we can capture that. But um, basically, uh, the longer, the more pulses we can get uh, per interval, the more. Uh, it relevant our, the more relevant our data is going to look to us. So we have our UX90 connected. Uh, again, we're, we're using the external input and we're going to select the pulse as, as our logging algorithm. And then we're going to click on sensor type. You'll notice there are some selections for pulses like amp hours, var hours, which is reactive, uh, volt amps reactive and watt hours those are made available for um, use with a device called the Varus energy and power meter we're not going to talk about that in this course specifically um, we we cover it in the UX 90 and the UX 120 course what we're going to talk about is the kilowatt hour assistant so in order to get to that we need to select counts and raw pulse and then we'll see over here we have the kilowatt hour assistant available. There's also a scaling button. If you selected scaling, you would get 
to the same place, you can select either the kilowatt hour assistant or the pulse scaling assistant, which is uh, av available with the free version of Hobleware also. And that's just a one for one relationship. One pulse equals so many whatevers that uh, however you want to scale that. However, we want to use the kilowatt hour assistant. And again, that takes us to the same place if we click on that. And we're going to either click on create or double click on the kilowatt hour assistant to open that assistant window. The top of the screen, we have the ability to select what channel we want to uh, connect to. Uh, this particular logger only has one external input, but if you were using pulse input adapters with a station logger, like an energy logger or an RX3000 or MicroStation, you may have multiple uh, pulse inputs, multiple pulse input adapters, so this is where you would select that. Under setup is where you would select the model number of the device that you are connecting that is going to generate those pulses for you. Available here. Um, these scaling factors are, um, we, we obtain those from the Watt Node manual. When you purchase a Watt Node, either directly from Continental Controls or from us, you will get a paper copy of their manual that has the table that gives you these pulse values also. So if you happen to purchase one that we don't resell or is not included in this list, you could go in and manually scale that and I'll show you how to do that in a minute. So if you're going to use a watt node, you would select the model and you would also put in the size of the CT, the current transformer, that you will have connected to your circuit. This is important because this um, Again, this has an impact on how many pulses you get per kilowatt hour or how many kilowatt hours you get per pulse. If uh, the other product that we resell is uh, there's two different versions that we resell from Varus Industries. These also output pulses. Um, the difference with the Varus devices is there's um, they're adjustable. Um, there's a there's dip switches on the side of those where you can set what you want your pulse rate to be. So you have to make sure that whatever you select on the Varus device for your pulse rate matches what how you have it configured here. We also give you the ability to put in a, a custom pulse rate, either watt hours per pulse per CT rated amp, just plain watt hours per pulse or kilowatt hours per pulse. So if you have a third party sensor or perhaps a Varus or watt node device that outputs pulses other than the models that we support in our drop down menus you can put that pulse rate in here and get that information. Your series that are going to be created from these scaled pulses we give you the ability to create three series. The first one is energy in kilowatt hours. And again, default that series name is energy. You can change that if you want to. We also give you the ability to allow Hoboware to calculate average power per interval based on that pulse rate and how many intervals there are in an hour. So that, that's how it does that. The resultant series name is average power, but again, you can change that too if you want to. We also give you the ability to, to use a, um, a rudimentary cost calculator. If you know how much you get charged per kilowatt hours in U.S. dollars or in dollars, uh, Australian dollars or Canadian dollars, um, you could put that value in here and you will also get a series created based on that calculation. And again, we uh, by default, we call it cost, but you can put in anything. You can call it anything you wish. And you can put in user notes, which will show up in your details pane. The same kilowatt hour assistant window is available in uh, when your post process counts. And I'm going to show you how we do that uh, just in the, ne in the next little bit of this video. Keep in mind that if you use the kilowatt hour assistant to scale your pulses from your energy device and you record that data, if you try to plot that data in Hobo in the free version of Hoboware uh, after you read out the data. In other words, if you have a historical data file that has pre-scaled um, pulses using the kilowatt hour assistant and you try to open it in the free version of Hoboware, those, the kilowatt hour uh, energy and power values will not be shown because it's not supported in the free version of Hoboware. So uh, important to keep in mind. If you save your um, process data using um, 
the kilowatt hour assistant again if you post process the data and save it as a hobo project file the uh, energy and average power in kilowatt values will be able to be viewed in the free version of hoboware because the project file is basically an image of your original data so um, it doesn't rely on that uh, the kilowatt hour assistant to display that data so in, important to understand um, let's look at some data from a logger that was deployed logging some uh, data from a 240 volt AC panel using the UX 90001 set in pulse mode again the the energy and um, average power was pre pre-configured before the logger was launched let's go to file open data file there's our there's our data file and notice we have the raw counts are available for plot but hoboware by default is not selecting those that's because we have a prep there's a preference in hoboware and hoboware pro to plot all series or include all series anytime you plot data i have that turned off so what hoboware is saying it says okay it, it's looking at what i um, how i configured the logger when i launched it and it's saying okay well you took the time to use the kilowatt hour assistant to scale the counts to represent energy and average power so when you plot the data i am not going to include counts because obviously you want to see it in energy and average power you can select counts and include those in this plot but again energy and average power is just going to overlay those um, the other thing you could do here too is if let's say for example the person who was setting this up actually put in the wrong scaling for these two um, series you could deselect them run the K, uh, kwh assistant here as a post-processing function go in and put the correct scaling in there and then include those new series and then when you plot it save it as a hobo project file and then you'll get the correct information anyway let's select uh, those two i'm going to deselect my internal events and let's plot that data and there's our data again there's my uh, it was recording every five minutes so there's my my kilowatt hours per five minute interval and my average power in kilowatts and if we want to see how these were scaled we click in the details pane over here in the left margin click on kilowatt hours and you can see we have a list of um, different choices device uh, devices deployment information series statistics and then there's a kilowatt hour parameters selection and if we click on the little plus sign it'll tell us how it was configured for what watt node the ct size that was used and what the scale factor was uh, what scale factor was used now let's look at some data that was not scaled before the logger was deployed and we'll run through that kilowatt hour assistant um, as a post-processing function so we're going to go to file open data files and we did a home energy uh, energy audit on a home again it's a 240 panel um, so we can see we had a, a temperature sensor that was uh, stuck out uh, measuring the outdoor temperature one that was reading the indoor temperature and then here's our counts channel so that's that's what hoboware calls pulses so because hoboware pro is seeing temperature and counts it's making the kilowatt hour assistant available the growing degree days assistant available because growing degree days is dependent on a temperature measurement and the pulse scaling assistant which would be a, which would be the only one that would be available if this was the free version of hoboware so let's click on uh, again we we have the kwh assistant uh, selected or highlighted here let's click on process and we again we we just have that one uh, pulse channel here and it's called counts by hoboware we want to i know it was a watt node and again you have to use some diligence you have to re, you have to write down the model number you want you're using and the ct sizes because if you don't put the right value in here your data will be incorrect so i know this was a wna 3d 240 that i was using which is the delta version of the 240 volt watt node which does not require a neutral and I know I had 50 amp CTs on here. Again, this is a what they call a split phase circuit. So two two hot leads and a neutral. But I use the the watt node that does not have uh, doesn't require the neutral. 
I'm going to create series called energy and average power per interval. I'm not going to use the usage cost calculator um, for this exercise, just to kind of show you how this data is presented. We're going to click create new series. And now notice we're back in our plot setup screen. We have the temperature channels. We have our counts. And then we have our um, derived channels, our calculated scaled channels, uh, energy and average power. I'm going to deselect counts and click plot. So there is my data. And again, several weeks of data. There's my data table. This logger was logging every two minutes, which is pretty fast for energy. And uh, if you recall, we talked about setting a longer interval to get more pulses. So you can see that our scale data is um, very small. The, the kilowatt hours per two minute interval is extremely small number. And again, here's our average power per kilowatt, uh, average power per interval in kilowatts based on our uh, how many intervals there are in an hour. If we want to totalize our energy consumption over a period of time, let's say I want to know how much energy I'm using every day. The way you would do that is you would select series energy, highlight that, and then go up to the top of the screen and click on edit filter series and we have again we have our max min and average uh, filter criteria because these are pulses we also have total available so we want to select total and again we have several choices for our um, filter we're going to do it by day and I want to change this and put daily so total daily energy click on OK then up at the top of the screen, there's a little um, box that says show graph at full scale. We're going to click on that. And there are my daily totals as kind of a stair step, if you will. Again, there's my filter data, total, total daily energy. If we wanted to uh, make this a little more um, stand out a little bit stronger, we can double click on that with our, with our arrow cursor and we can select solid as the line maybe make it a little wider three points sounds good if we select to not connect as steps Hobleware will just connect each total as kind of a sinusoidal look instead of the stair stop stair step look and again you could put in alarm thresholds to show shading in your data file if you want to and change your color etc but let's let's take a look at this so there's our our daily totals you can remove or hide the raw data and you can export this to excel in this format if you like this format and you want to retain it uh, this view you can save it as what's called the hobo project file again uh, we talked about that previously but if you just click on file and save project and it saves it as an hproj file and you'll be able to call us up and see this again in the future